Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Buckle up and settle in because we're about to dive into some piping hot royalty that's so scandalous it'll make your grandma's soap operas look like a kiddie pool. It's your favorite neighborhood critic here and boy do I have a juicy story for you today. We're talking about a royal shuffle that's more dramatic than a Shakespeare play with more plot twists than a pretzel factory. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on. What are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's set the scene. We've got Sophie and Edward, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, working their royal tushes off like they're trying to win employee of the month at Buckingham Palace. These two have been running around cutting ribbons, shaking hands, and probably perfecting their royal waves until their arms are sore than a weightlifter after leg day. And King Charles, well, he's been watching them like a proud papa at a school play, probably thinking, hot diggity, these two are really bringing their A-game. But hold on to your fascinators, folks, because here's where it gets juicier than a perfectly ripe peach. King Charles, in all his kingly wisdom, is supposedly thinking about giving Sophie and Edward the keys to Royal Lodge. Now, for those of you who aren't up to speed on your royal real estate, Royal Lodge is like the Rolls Royce of royal properties. We're talking 30 rooms, prime Windsor real estate, probably more bathrooms than you can count on both hands. It's the kind of place that makes the MTV cribs look like a garden shed. But here's the kicker. Royal Lodge isn't some empty mansion just waiting for new tenants. It's currently occupied by none other than Prince Andrew, the royal family's equivalent of the uncle nobody wants to talk to at Christmas dinner. And let me tell you, Andrew is not happy about this potential eviction notice. He's probably stamping his feet and throwing a tantrum that would make a toddler look well behaved. Now, I can just imagine Andrew's reaction when he heard this news. Picture it. He's sitting in his lavish living room, possibly polishing his collection of fancy paperweights or whatever it is disgraced royals do in their spare time, when suddenly he gets wind of this royal real estate shakeup. I bet he spat out his Earl Grey faster than you could say God save the queen. He's probably screaming, but it's not fair, I've been here for 20 years, I signed a lease. Sorry Andy, but in the Game of Thrones you win or you downsize, and let's be real for a second folks, Andrew signing a 75 year lease on Royal Lodge back in 2003 is like that friend who calls dibs on the front seat for eternity. It might have seemed like a good idea at the time, but things change buddy. The Royal Family isn't a game of musical chairs where you can just sit pretty once you've nabbed your spot. It's more like a high stakes game of Survivor, and Andrew, well, the tribe has spoken and it looks like he's being voted off Royal Lodge Island. Now let's talk about Sophie and Edward for a hot minute. These two have been the royal family's equivalent of those reliable co-workers who always volunteer to cover your shift. They've been showing up, putting in the hours, and probably perfecting their small talk skills to an Olympic level. I mean, 297 engagements for Edward and 219 for Sophie? That's more appearances than a pop star on a world tour. They've been busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger and King Charles has definitely noticed. It's like Charles looked at Sophie and Edward and thought, well, butter my crumpets, these two are really putting in their weight. Maybe it's time to upgrade them from the royal broom closet to the penthouse suite. And Royal Lodge, well, that's definitely the penthouse of royal properties. It's like going from a studio apartment to downtown Abbey overnight. But here's where it gets really interesting, folks. This isn't just about rewarding the hard workers or playing real estate musical chairs. Oh no, this is Charles playing 40 chess while the rest of us are still trying to figure out checkers. He's not just moving people around, he's sending a message louder than a town crier with a megaphone, and that message? Shape up or ship out. Think about it, by potentially giving Royal Lodge to Sophie and Edward, Charles is basically saying, hey, here folks, you want the perks, you gotta put in the work. It's like he's dangling the keys to the executive bathroom in front of the whole royal family saying, you want this? Then start pulling your weight. And poor old Andrew. Well, he's learning the hard way that in Charles's new regime, you can't just coast on by your royal bloodline. It's not enough to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You've got to use that spoon to stir things up and make a difference. Andrew's probably feeling more sidelined than a bench warmer in the World Cup final. He's gone from being a key player to, well, let's just say if the royal family was a soccer team, Andrew would be the guy selling hot dogs in the stands. Now, I can hear some of you out there saying, but Miss Critic, isn't this a bit harsh? kicking Andrew out of his home, and to that I say, have you been living under a rock? This isn't about Andrew overstaying his welcome, like that house guest who just won't take a hint. 
this is Charles doing some serious royal house cleaning and Andrew, well, he's the dust bunny that's about to get swept under the rug. Let's not forget, folks, Andrew stepped down from royal duties back in 2019 faster than you could say PR nightmare. He's been about as useful to the royal family as a chocolate teapot since then. And now, well, it looks like Charles is finally putting the final nail in the coffin of Andrew's royal career, and he's saying, sorry, bro, but if you're not going to help row the boat, you can't expect to keep your first class cabin. And let's talk about the optics for a second, shall we? In this day and age, with everyone and their grandmother scrutinizing every move the royals make, Charles is making a bold statement. He's basically shouting from the rooftops, look here folks, we are not just a bunch of posh people living under your taxes. We're working hard, and those who work hard get rewarded. It's like he's turning the monarchy into the world's fanciest mediocrity. Who knew the royal family could be so corporate? But here's the real tea, folks. This move, it's not just about Andrew or Sophie and Edward. Oh no, this is Charles sending a message to the entire royal family and probably to a couple of certain ex-royals across the pond too, wink wink. It's like he's saying, you want the perks of a royal life? Better start earning them, sunshine. I wouldn't be surprised if Harry and Meghan are watching this whole drama unfold from their California mansion, probably choking on their avocado toast. Now. Let's not forget about the real victims in all this. The staff at Royal Lodge. Can you imagine being a butler or a maid right there? Talk about awkward. It's like being stuck in the middle of the world's poshest divorce. They're probably tiptoeing around, dusting the priceless antiques, all while Andrew is having a meltdown in the East Wing and Sophie and Edward are measuring their curtains. It's like a real version of Downton Abbey, but with more drama and fewer charming accents. And what about the neighbors? Imagine being the folks next door to Royal Lodge. One day you're waving to Andrew as he takes his... Well, whatever disgrace princes do for daily exercise. The next day you might see Sophie and Edward jogging past, probably practicing their royal waves as they go. It's like the world's fanciest episode of New Neighbors. But here's the million dollar question, folks. Is this the end of Prince Andrew's royal story? Oh honey, not by a long shot. If there's one thing we know about old Andy, it's that he's got more lives than a cat in a life jacket. He's probably already planning his comeback and I can see it now. The tell-all book, the exclusive interviews, maybe even a reality show. Keeping up with the disgraced prince. Anyone? Move over Kardashians, there's a new drama queen in town. And let's not forget about the rest of the royal family. They're probably watching this whole situation unfold like it's the season finale of their favorite soap opera. William and Kate are probably sitting in their place, munching on popcorn, thinking, thank goodness it's not us this time. Princess Anne's probably rolling her eyes so hard they might get stuck that way, and Prince Harry, well, he's probably on the phone to Netflix faster than you could say documentary series, pitching the Real House Swaps of Windsor. But in all seriousness, folks, this move by King Charles is more than a royal reshuffle. It's a statement, a declaration, a manifesto written in the language of real estate. He's drawing a line in the sand, or should I say the perfectly manicured lawns of Windsor. He's saying, this is the new royal family, folks. We work hard, we play by the rules, and we definitely don't overstay our welcome in 30-room mansions. It's like Charles is finally putting his foot down, and let me tell you, that foot he's wearing is a very expensive, very shiny shoe. He's not just changing addresses, he's changing the whole darn game. It's out with the old, in with the new, and if you can't keep up, well, there's probably a nice little cottage somewhere in the countryside with your name on it. So there you have it, my dear viewers. The royal family is shaking up faster than a bartender at happy hour. It's more dramatic than a Shakespeare play performed by cats. Will Andrew go quietly into the good night? Will Sophie and Edward get their Windsor Castle dreams? Or will this all blow up in Charles's face like a badly baked souffle? Only time will tell my friends but one thing's for sure. I'll be here, your friendly neighborhood critic, ready to spill all the tea and serve up the hottest takes on this royal roller coaster. So grab your scones, adjust your tiaras, and stay tuned. Because in the world of royalty, the only thing more certain than tea time is drama. And boy, do we have plenty of that to go around. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.